name is Bruce and this is Cleanse Tech's Dish Machine 101. Number one, let's talk about the detergent first. The first thing we have on the machine is the pail of rinsing fluid. We want to make sure that the pail is full and the probe is all the way down into the pail. Let's check the soap. The detergent is called Action Caps. You can see that this one is empty. So we're going to take this out. We have a new jar here of Action Caps. The lid comes off very easily. Take the lid off, take it, turn it upside down, and gently place it into the hopper. Let's go into the machine and see what's involved in breaking down the machine. So what we want to do first of all, is we want to take the wash arms out of the machine, and that's done very, very simply by lifting up the catch, like so, taking the wash arm, pushing it out of the way. Okay, to remove the upper arm, we're just going to take and move the catch out of the way. Push the arm in and down. And of course you want to drain the water away from you so you don't get wet as you come out. Alright, what we're going to do now is we're going to pull out the drain. This is also the pump intake. And there's food soil here and this has to be cleaned off. You also want to make sure that the O-ring at the bottom of the drain is intact. Otherwise, the machine will lose water. If you don't find an O-ring there, you've got to call your supervisor. Okay, we're going to take out the, the trays. Now, these trays have glass on them. You've got to be very careful. There's broken glass. We don't want to turn the tray over and dump it into the tank. We want to very carefully remove it from the machine. We remove the holder that held the drain in place. We want to turn it over and check it to see if it needs cleaning. And also the centerpiece to take it out for cleaning. Now we can look into the bottom of the tank itself and see what the bottom of the tank is. You'll notice down here is the heating element. This one's in perfect condition, nice and clean. The bottom of the tank is clean. We're all good. There's a float over here. That float is free. That's the float that tells the machine when it has enough water in it. Okay, when a rack comes into the machine, it's going to hit these activating bars. When the bars activate, it moves a magnet out of the way on the bottom here. There are times when this magnet may get full of steel wool, or a fork may jam it just as my finger is jamming it now. If that happens, the wash will stay on and not shut off. All that's necessary is to pull the steel wool off, pull the fork out of the way, and let the magnet return to the normal position. There is a magnet here for the wash, there's also one for the rinse. Okay, we're going to take out the arms. We'll pull out the top arm first by lifting the catch up in the air. Gently pulling the arm out. I'm going to take the bottom arm, I'm going to lift the catch up out of the way, and I'm going to gently pull the arm out. Okay, the arm comes out of the machine, we'll work on cleaning it. The scrap trays, first we'll take the drain out too. Pull the drain out, check the drain to make sure that the O-ring is in place. And we're going to take the cover for the drain. The scrap trays come out. And we're going to also take out the cover that holds the drain in place. Turn it upside down and make sure it's spotlessly clean. What's very important in the bottom of the rinsing tank is a strainer in the corner. This strainer lifts right out very simply and we take it out for cleaning purposes. If this strainer is dirty, the rinse in the machine will be very poor. The wash arms have got caps on the end and the caps open up very, very easily for cleaning purposes. Take a knife, push the dirt back into the arm and with a hose or a spray nozzle such as this we spray the arm and get it clean. Okay, we've opened the caps up on the arm, both on both sides. I've taken the liberty of pushing the dirt back in with a knife, and now we just take the arm and we spray it. And of course, we're gonna do this for all the arms. The small arms, again, we've pushed the dirt back into the arms. You can either use a toothpick, anything, fork, push the dirt back in. Open the cap up on the end of the arm and flush it out with water. Close the cap up and they're ready to go back in the machine. The same thing with the scrap trays. The scrap trays, you turn them upside down. As you can see, the strainer is quite dirty. 
and this is going to stop the pump from working properly. You want to take a knife and scrape it off a little bit with a knife, then again take the hose and hose the dirt right away. As you can see, everything comes off very, very easily. A simple little thing like this will stop the machine from functioning correctly. Okay, we're going to take the scrap basket outside of the machine, pull it out, turn it upside down, spray it clean with our hose, and we're going to put this right back inside the machine. Put the strainer back into place where it goes into the opening. I'm going to put the scrap trays back in. The rinse arm goes back in place. And automatically the cover, the latch closes. And notice on the rinse arm, there's a little tab here. That tab lines up with an opening so that the arms only go in one direction. And we can put the drain right back in. We'll now go over to the wash and do the same thing in the wash. Okay, I'm going to start by putting the, the trays in. That covers in there. Here's the support bar for the, for the drain. The small scrap tray goes in place large scrap tray and now we put the drain in place. Notice I put the drain in very very gently. I'm not pushing it in because if you push it in it's going to jam and you may have trouble getting it out later on. This thing is just gently dropped into place. That's all just that's all that's necessary. These flaps must be kept closed. If these flaps are open all the water will go down and you'll lose water straight down the drain. These are deflective plates and they stop the water from going into the drain. I put it into the groove here first, pull back, and slide it the other way. Now the latch goes down, and it's locked. It cannot fall out. You take it out, you put it back, you know? Another thing you want to check in these machines, too, is people call up and they complain. They say there's water squirting out of the machine. Well, usually it's a very, very simple problem, such as this. This is the wash arm caps. This is closed. This one over here is open, and the water is going to go flying out of the machine. Whether it comes out of the pre-wash end or the final rinse end, there's a tremendous amount of water squirting out of the machine, and the problem is very easy to solve. We open it up, close the cap, that's it. Done. No more problems. We look for the hole, put it right into the hole, and then up into the hook. On this side, Current gets placed into the hole first and then hooked onto the other side. Okay, closing the door is very simple. You lift the door up a little bit, push the safety catch out of the way, and bring the door down. Now it's going to hit the second safety catch. That's, what's prote that's what protects your fingers. Lift it up again, push it out of the way, and now the door closes completely down. We have a wash temperature gauge here. The wash temperature should be about 150, 160 degrees. The rinse tank, we want that to be 160, 170. And of course, our final rinse sanitizing rinse should be 180 to 190 degrees. We're going to turn the circuit breaker on on the wall, turn the switch on, and now the machine will go into an automatic fill. We just wait till it fills, and then we operate the machine. I'm going to give it a quick spray, get the, most of the heavy stuff off it. And as I put it into the machine, the machine's going to start by itself. I only want to put it a little way. I don't want to push it all the way because then I'll miss all the arms. We'll go around the other side and we'll watch it coming back out. Now as the glass rack is coming out of the machine, you don't want to pull it. You want it to come out on its own so that we don't miss any of the spray. I'm not going to pull it. I'm just going to let it come out by itself. Now that it's stopped, I'm going to pull it out the rest of the way. You see the water that's on the top of the glass here? This water will cause staining. So I'm going to take the rack, tip it slightly like that, and then put it at an angle to dry. That's what a clean glass looks like, and that's how you make a clean glass. And this is CleanStech Dish Machine 101.